very good evening friends meeting again with the stuart close philosophy and the chapter symptomatology we are on the concluding part of this chapter big chapter the symptomatology where he has started explaining about the basics what is what is symptom as an expression of the internal derangement of vital force in the form of some manifestations and then he started explaining about the subjective and objective symptoms the subjective symptoms are symptoms which are very essential for homeopathic point of view because those are the individual feelings and which differentiates one individual from the another individual and that's why it's too important they are the symptoms which are felt by the patient and not observable to an observer as compared the objective symptoms are observable to everyone but they are of little consequence to the homeopath because generally they are diagnostic features or pathological features or end products after explaining those he has explained about the totality of the symptoms and he has explained the hanemanian definition from the seventh aphorism in the sixth edition of organon that is it is an outwardly man, um, outwardly reflected picture of the internal essence of the disease that is of the affection of the vital force and he explains what is meant by the picture the every concept regarding it he has tried to explain over there after explaining that he tried to explain the importance of totality it should not be just numerical totality but it should be a totality which should consist of certain symptoms which can differentiate one individual from another and that's why it requires the characteristic totality or complete totality and that's why kent has very classically defined it is the sum of characteristic symptoms as the totality of symptoms and boning hussens make it in his own language that is the the totality of symptoms which could, should consider location sensation modality and concomitant so it is sum of all complete symptoms it's called as totality that's what boning hussens said and we were discussing that keynote and characteristic symptom and importance of it everyone have tried to explain that keynotes or characteristic symptoms are the symptoms which differentiates one individual from another individual and they are the key to open the lock of the case but they are not the things on the basis of which you should prescribe directly a remedy so very specifically he has mentioned about it that these are this is not a thing which will going to give you directly a remedy at least there should be a three leg stool which will confirm or make firm your prescription as kent has rightly said and that three at least three characteristic symptoms should be there in order to open that given gunsey dr p p wells all of them or even dr adol plippe they have explained that keynotes are characteristic symptoms are only symptoms which are useful for individualizing which are useful for differentiation but not the symptoms which will directly give you a remedy and this is what we have learned up till now let us go ahead with the next future next it is on in the page number 162 the first paragraph dr herring in his quaint fashion years before the keynote system was ever heard of said every stool must have at least three legs if it is to stand alone he advised selecting at least three characteristic symptoms on the basis of prescribing and this is what the kent and hearing both of them have said every stool if it has to be remain fixed at least three legs should be there then and then it remains stable same is true when you have to find it out a right remedy or pal the totality should cover at least three characteristic symptoms so that you can get a right remedy a milking stool will stand upon one leg if you sit on it and thus provide your own two legs as the other necessary props but even then as every farmer's boy knows by bitter experience a very vicious kick or corkscrew sweat threat from the old old cow's tail may upset the 
youthful milker and his pail of milk and bring him to the grave. So he is giving you a simple example that unless and until you should have a firm base of three characteristic um, symptoms, it is not possible to find a firm totality. So it should not be a, only one characteristic symptom and rest of the two common symptoms. No, it never guides you towards the remedy. So very specifically, the Herring has mentioned one thing that it should have three, at least three important characteristic or complete symptoms, which will guide you towards the right remedy. So it is wise to always give symptomatic milk stool as a broad base and as many legs as possible. The youthful prescriber will get many a vicious kick from refractory cases. He may be knocked sprawling and lose his pail of milk in a few times, but he will be able to avoid this when he has learned the peculiarities of his patient as well as I learned the peculiarities of my bovine kicker when I was a boy. And he has given example of that, that if you, if you are a younger practitioner and if you just take, go on finding it out, the common symptoms and trying to prescribe, then you'll fail. But if you if you get very characteristic, if you get acquainted how to take out the peculiarities and find it out at least three, four symptoms on which your prescription are, is firmly based, then you can get the success in it. And it is a part and parcel of experience. Little bit experience makes you more confident to catch the peculiarities, the characteristics from the patient. And then we, it becomes very simple to reach to the minimum. So, it's a part and parcel of practice which makes you perfect to take out the characteristic totality. The totality is an ideal not always to be realized. As a matter of fact, in practical experience, it is often impossible to complete every simple symptom or even a large part of symptoms. Patients have not observed and cannot state all these points. They will give fragments, the location of, of a sensation which they cannot describe or a sensation which they cannot locate, or they will give you a sensation properly located, but without being able through ignorance, stupidity, failure to observe or forgetfulness to a state of a state the condition of time and circumstances under which it appeared. Sometimes no amount of questioning will succeed in bringing out the misleading elements, missing elements of some of the symptoms. So patients comes to you with vague symptoms. Generally, if it is a patient who is chronic enough, you are not going to get a characteristic. Many times you will get only sometimes location, sometimes only sensation, sometimes one of the modality. But you will not get the complete symptom. Unless and until the symptom becomes complete, it never becomes characteristic. A symptom which has location, a proper sensation, a proper modality, a proper concomitant, automatically the symptom, this complete symptom becomes characteristic. But patients generally, they talk to you in vague character. Patient comes and patient says, doctor, I'm having diabetes. I want treatment from you. Finished. You are nowhere. You have to treat his diabetes. But without symptoms, how can it be possible? Your question should be, what is your problem? What, what troubles you most? So that you can find it out at least some symptomatology. If you're going uh, to open your repertory and find it out, urine, sugar, chapter, there are many remedies. And those are the remedies which are clinical findings. They are not directly remedies which have a proving over there. So, unless and until you are having a proper symptoms, you will not reach to the right remedy. But if you get a patient who is absolutely debilitated, doesn't have a strength, having a diabetes, having a tremendous weakness, and he wants, he craves the juicy things, he wants that only, nothing more than that. And he, he is absolutely indifferent, never interested in anything. If such a patient comes, then it is rather simple to reach to the right remedy. So what may be the remedy if such type of patient comes to you? Patient is there 
who is absolutely debilitated, doesn't have strength to sit in front of you, having a diabetes since last 5-6 years, under allopathic treatment, he is absolutely indifferent towards everything, he is not interested to lie, who craves the juicy things. So what is the remedy? Now it is simple to find it out a remedy. Otherwise it is not possible, just prescribing for diabetes is not a role. So remedy is, put it in your chart, any, any example, simple, very correct. It is the acid phosphoricum, very correct. You are reaching to the right remedy because you get the characteristic symptoms with which it is possible. If they are not there, you can't. And that's why you, you have to complete the totality from the patient. It takes a long time to find it out, all those symptoms from the patient. What is to be done under such circumstances? Make a gaze at the remedy. Give two or three remedies in alteration. Give a combination tablet or dope the patient with quinine or morphine. Rather than do anything of these, follow the advice of my old preceptor, Dr. P. P. Wells. So if you are not getting symptoms, what to do? He says, Give the two or three remedies or alternate the remedies or give the mixture or give the allopathic medicines. No, this is not the answer. Then he says, Dr. P. P. Wells, what he says. Sometimes when I approached him with difficult case, he would assume a quizzical expression and ask, don't you know what to do on being answered? In the, in the negative, he would say, if you don't want to do, do nothing until you do know emphasizing the injunction with a characteristic downward stroke of his right forefinger. Then he would go over the case and show what should be done and how to do it. So, what to do in such types of cases? What you have to find it out? You have to go with the case again. You have to ask the patient details. You have to go and find it out. Ask more and more details. And listen, until you do this hard work, it is not possible to get a characteristic from the case. If you ask vaguely, if you just put, what, what's your problem? Patient is telling, I'm having di diabetes. No, nothing. Patient comes and he says, I'm having hypertension. I want homeopathic treatment. No use. You have to ask, what is your problem? Then you have to ask the details. Then you have to ask and complete the symptoms. And you have to go with the fifth aphorism. What is given in fifth aphorism? In order to investigate the fundamental cause, he has mentioned seven important points which guides you towards the remedy in order to investigate a fundamental cause. First point he has explained, a certainable physical constitution, which is the first important thing. Second important point which he has mentioned in fifth aphorism is his moral and intellectual character of the patient. Number three point which he has mentioned is the mode of living and habits. That is the third important toy point which he has mentioned regarding it. Then his social and domestic relations which are necessary to understand that patient. The fifth point which he has highlighted over there is very important ask regarding the occupation and his as, as aspect or looking toward the um, aspect of occupation. The sixth point, his age. The seventh point, his sexual function. And these are seven important points, points which will make your totality, which will individualize the case. And those are necessary when you are dealing with the chronic cases with the fundamental cause. And unless you get this, it is not possible to reach to the right remedy. So, if you get something characteristic in the case, then it's okay. Patient comes to you, patient is having the any specific diagnosis. For example, patient comes to you with hypertension, but does an asymptomatic patient having hypertension since long time on antihypertensive and he wants homeopathic treatment. If you ask, what's your problem? He said hypertension, finished. If you ask, what, what, do you, what, you, what problem you are having? He says nothing. Then why do you take the medicine? He says, doctor has said, finished. You are nowhere. 
then you have to take the case you have to ask all those things and when you reach to the certain thing you get that patient is having the three different dreams he says that he has the dreams of water he has the dreams of snakes very often he has the dreams of dead people dead relatives very often the whole case revolves around his dreams very important something which which are three plus in your case what is there then you have to repertorize find it out what remedy comes if you repertorize these three dreams you get the kali carbonicum then you reach to somewhere without without the symptoms and that's why all those points are necessary the personal history the family history the um, past history the present complaints all those things mind everything which you have to take into consideration which guides you towards a certain thing and this is what he is explaining unless you have something in your hand it is not possible to treat with the help of homeopathy and then to complete that um, specific para paragraph related with the keynotes and characteristic he says it was he who taught me boningusen's method of dealing with such cases and i thought the more of it because he had known boningusen and had received instructions and treatments from the grand old man personally while traveling in europe so dr pp wells was the student of dr boningusen and dr clothes was the student of dr pp wells so whatever is written by clothes is the part and parcel of things which are mentioned by the stalwarts and then he turns that how to learn boningusen's therapeutic pocket book and what is more important of importance of boningusen's therapeutic pocket book so he starts with boningusen's therapeutic pocket book boningusen's famous therapeutic pocket book was devised primarily to deal with such cases the materia medica contains great number of incomplete symptoms until boningusen's time this constituted one of the greatest obstacles to the successful homeopathic prescribing Boningusen was the first conceived the idea of completing symptom partly by analogy and partly by clinical observation of curative effects. He discovered that many of many, if not all, the of the modalities of the case were general in their relation and were not necessarily confined to the particular symptom with which they had first been observed. the aggravation in a warm room of pulsatilla for example might first have been observed as applying to headache boning boning husen assumed that this modality applied to all symptoms to the patient himself in other words and that this modality once discovered in relation to any particular symptom of pulsatilla might be used to complete all the other symptoms of the pulsatilla which up to that time has been incomplete in respect to their modality experience proved this to be true so moningusen was the person who has who came out with the concept of grand generalization in fact it is the only repertory which is based upon the grand generalization which is based upon the inductive reasoning inductive logic all other repertories are there on the deductive logic where it starts with general and ends with particulars here you have to go start from particulars make it generalized and look it into the repertory so boningusen's therapeutic pocket book in the field of homeopathy is the only repertory which is based upon the inductive reasoning inductive method of reasoning and it is the only repertory which has very specifically mentioned the concept of grand generalization question arises what is the grand generalization grand generalization is nothing but the whatever is true for the part is true for the whole human being so if he has given right example if patient has the modality the headache aggravated ameliorated aggravated in warm room the modality should be applied not only to the head but as a general aggravation in warm room and then you have to look into the repertory open the repertory boningusen therapeutic pocket book open the modality chapter open the aggravation and then you see under warm room aggravation 
So this is directly making a symptom which is particular to general. So that is what is called as grand generalization. And that's why Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book who carries only seven chapters. Because it is it becomes too easy to make a grand generalization and to reach to the right symptom. And very easily you can repertoire. Right? So if sensation is present in one part, if there is a pain in abdomen, which is burning type of pain, but there is no modality, but headache, headache is there where the aggravation in warm room is there. So you see the sensation in sensation chapter, the burning, make it generalize and see sensation burning. That is one rubric. Then you'll see the part location where you see the abdomen. Then you see the location, part head, and then you see modality chapter, aggravation, warm room. These are four rubrics which you can find it out. So what you have done? You have fragmented the symptom and made it generalized. And because of generalization, it becomes rather simple to, to reach to the remedy. And that was Boningusen's concern. And that's why even though in one part, if you don't get a characteristic modality, but it is given in another part, you apply to as a general to the patient. Same is true for the sensation. And that this is what the Boningusen's idea of grand generalization is there. And that's why his therapeutic pocket book is a quick bedside prescriber, which one can carry along with. Because of which it becomes rather simple to reach to the remedy, just repertorize it at that same, same time. So very clearly he has mentioned that Experience proved this to be true. That means whatever Boningusen has taught is experienced, uh, mentioned that this is truth, whatever he has said regarding the grand generalization. Out of this, grew the idea that other com combination of symptoms might be thus made by classifying the characteristic features of medicines in certain general relation to each other in such a way that one part could be used to the complete another and prescriber might always be able to construct the real to related totality even with apparently fragmentary symptom and this is the way to complete the picture so in one part you get characteristic sensation in another part you get characteristic modality in another part you get characteristic amelioration modality complete that totality Make it general, find it locations under the chapter of locations, sensations under uh, sensation under part of sensation chapter, the modality is aggravation in aggravation part, amelioration in amelioration part, and repertorize it. What you are doing, you are applying one modality in one part to the another part, making it general, and this is simple way. This is what is called as a grand generalization. This is the concept of Boning Hussein. And Boning Hussain was right enough to tell because his concept was that that if man is made up of the from single stem, it is a stem cell from which he has evolved. So ultimately, every organ is connected with another organ. Every cell is connected with another cell. So whatever is true for one part is true for another part because they are interconnected. They are not developed or they are not brought from outside and Mm, uh, as if a car is prepared, it is. it has been evolved from right from center. And that's why modality of one part you can apply to the another part. The sensation in one part, you can apply it to another part. And that's what the Boningusen thought was there and which was very correct. Starting with the basic idea that every symptom is composed of three elements of location, locality, sensation and modality, that fragmentary symptoms may be completed by analogy or by supplementary clinical observation of curative effects of similar remedies. Boningusen, in his therapeutic pocket book, distributes the elements of all symptoms, pathogenetic and clinical, according to this analysis, into seven distinct parts or sections which taken together from the grand totality. So in Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book, there are only these seven chapters. Which are them? The first is moral and intellectual faculties related with the mind. Number two, locality or set of symptoms, that is location. Number three chapter is the morbid conditions and sensations where you get all varieties, morbid symptoms, 
conditions or sensations which are mentioned in third chapter. The fourth chapter is related with the sleep and dream. The fifth chapter is related with circulation and fever. Sixth one with the modalities and etiology. And last chapter, concordances means remedy relationship. And the mm, concomitants also. So these are seven chapters which are very, very essential. And if you understand them properly, then using Boninghaus in therapeutic bucket book is an easy task. It has been not taught in many colleges. But if you if you learn this, then it becomes rather simple to utilize the Boning Hussel Therapeutic Pocket Book at bedside. So it becomes very clear to reach to the right remedy with the help of that. And this is what Boning Hussel's concept was there. So Boning Hussel was the person who has made use of two important things in his repertory. The first is the doctrine of grand generalization. And number two, doctrine of concomitants and concordances. These are very, very important entities which Boninghausen added in his therapeutic pocket book. So that's all for today. We'll, on this line, we'll complete today's session. Tomorrow we'll continue and tomorrow we might finish this chapter so that we'll finish complete um, totality, the symptomatology chapter. These are both chapters. We have started with the general pathology of homeopathy, which was very detailed chapter we have learned. And this is one more, which uh, secure and recovery, that also we have finished. The third chapter, today, tomorrow we are going to finish. And next we are going to learn the examination of the patient. All of them are important and useful from practice point of view, if you learn or understand close philosophy. And all those things helps a lot in understanding the details in practice. So, Kent's uh, Stuart Close aspect of understanding the philosophy is very useful in day-to-day -day homeopathic practice. So, that's all for today. Meet tomorrow at the same time. And today evening, we'll learn one more remedy from 30 years syllabus. That is the bismuth, a very important remedy in practice. So, Hello, sir. thank you being... Yes, who is there? Can I ask one question? Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, I was reading Borland's Children Type and in uh, that book it is given that uh, graphitis is useful when uh, symptom matches but uh, if eczema is of the chronic type, graphitis will not help. In that case, uh, always better to start with the thuja. Then sir, uh, uh, how to decide potency? If we want to start with thuja, yeah. uh, at that time... In skin cases. Okay. If you want to start with thuja, first important thing, if it is on superficial part and if it is what type of disorder it is, whether it is an acute disorder, chronic disorder, first thing which you have to take into consideration. Second important thing, if it is chronic one and then what type of disease, whether it is eczema, whether it is psoriasis, whether it is lichen planus, whether it is anything, means a chronic disorder persistent since long time but having a psychosomatic communication. If it is there, then you can go little bit higher. Or another thing, better to start with LM and repeat it. Repetition with LM is better always because it will not going to aggravate the condition. It will be very useful for you. General Generally, all those disorders, eczema, psoriasis, lichen planus, uh, or any other skin condition which is chronic enough, then it is always better to utilize the LM scale in repeated potency. So, LM1, LM2, LM3, you can go ahead. If there is a good response to it, then gradually every month you go on increasing the potency. That will be better for you. LM of graphite is not, sir. LM, whatever it may be, if it is graphitis, you give the graphitis. If it is thuja, you give okay, the thuja. Okay. But okay. first, find it out what is the totality and what it indicates exactly. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Any other question? So, we'll conclude today's session. We'll meet at 8 o'clock with Bismuth. Good night.